shall we begin? Shall we begin? Diddy has been denied bail for a second time. And I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit emotional. I'm, I'm very, very, very emotional over the topic. Why? Why would I be emotional over somebody so horrific as Diddy? And the ugly things that he did or he's alleged to do. See, here's the thing, right? He would out sin cast the first stone. Yes, I understand that. At one point in time, I was in jail. I was facing life. And the most painful is thing to me was leaving my first born son. Leaving my firstborn son, as I watch the news, the media, certain, certain different outlets, and I sit back and I watch the pain in the face of Diddy's kids. I look at his beautiful daughters, and it hurts. As a man, there is nothing more important in life than me being a father. And I see those similarities in Diddy being a father, always involved in his children's life, no matter what. As men, we learn to get it from the mud, but us real, real men, we know no matter what in life, the first priority, the number one priority, the first line of defense is home. No matter what, we got to make it home. And Diddy's in court begging. He's pleading. Telling the courts. I'll give you $50 million. I'll hire police to sit outside the house to make sure nobody comes in, nobody comes out. I'll give up my phone. I'll be drug tested. This is what Diddy is saying. Because he's fighting to make it home. He has everything to lose. And everything to live for within those children see because at some point in time a man's money no matter whether he's a billionaire or not we seeing this right in front of our faces that money will pass but those children are forever forever ever forever and see what i need for y'all to understand is right is that did he being in jail did he learn how to deal with the shook knights and all of the rest of the monsters that run out there in the jungle. He learned how to deal with the gorillas, the beast. And he survived them. Some of them didn't survive Diddy. But without Diddy being in these streets, how long he think his money is going to protect his children? You know, it's funny when you run into a little bit of money. I ain't got nowhere near Diddy money. When you get a little bit of money. Do you know the excuses, the phone calls people make? Calling you on the phone, making stuff up so that they can get more money out of you or trying to figure out if you're going to say yes. So they come with all types of brilliant schemes and all types of brilliant lies. Now, just imagine all those wolves that Diddy left in the streets around his children. Which one's going to be the first ones to bite at those babies? Who's going to be the first one to bite at those babies, those little boys? Because, yeah, they grown men now. And some of them, little Diddy Jr., the one that looked just like him, I see him surrounding himself with wolves, by wolves. Whether it be some of these dusty rappers or some of them gangbangers in the street. After a while, we already seen what the set do. I could go through stories. Decades of stories about how to set set trips. Now just imagine when everybody's everybody's looking at you like a dollar, and they drooling. Who's gonna protect those beautiful little girls? Who's gonna protect those boys? 
Will they find themselves in a situation like casting over two times? Where now they got to put security around them. They put street dudes around them. And them same street dudes is either A, going to devour them. Or B, get them caught up in a RICO and have them in a penitentiary as well. I see so many problems out here without Diddy. And see, my whole thing is I want you to understand something, right? I'm not screaming free Diddy. But I do believe that he should have a bell. Every man has a right to face their prosecution, their accuser, being free if they can afford the bell, no matter what. You know why? Because that's something that belongs to every man, no matter whether you're white or you're black or you're a billionaire. The court system should not be able to just, to just deny you bail. That is your right to be able to fight from the streets. And if they're doing it to Diddy, they'll do it to me. They've done it to me already. And they do it to many other black men. Diddy has a right to face his accuser from the streets. I stand on that. Am I trying to get in the way of the court system dealing with him justly? No, because I had to deal with the consequences of everything that I did. Now, when I went to court, whether I beat these cases or not, I still had to face the fire. So Diddy has to face the fire. But yet and still, it's not right. It's absolutely not right. Well, let's go to the tail of the tape. Breaking news in the Sean Diddy Combs uh, case. He's back in federal court today in Manhattan, this time trying to secure bail. The music mogul was denied bail yesterday after his arrest on sex trafficking and other charges. Prosecutors say that the charges stem from years of sexual abuse and threats against women. He has pleaded not guilty to those charges, and he ple made that plea yesterday. I want to bring in ABC News' Alex Stone, along with ABC News' legal contributor and trial attorney Brian Buckmeyer for more on this. So, again, we're uh, still waiting to hear the judge's decision today because again his defense team is trying to get him out on this 50 million dollar bond uh, and alex it does oh my producer just told me in my ear he has been ordered held again okay so the judge uh, judge andrew carter has decided that sean diddy combs will be held again in a federal facility so let's jump off right there here alex starting with you uh, we're learning from our aaron katursky who's in that courtroom that already this judge was pretty skeptical of some of the arguments that the defense team was making on diddy's behalf yeah, and that order just coming down right now, Kana. The, the, through the day today, uh, it appeared that the judge uh, was, from the beginning, skeptical about this, talking about that video that was seen around the world in L.A. of Combs uh, allegedly attacking his then-girlfriend, and the judge saying, what's love got to do with that? As the defense had been saying, that was a relationship that was deteriorating and that it was nothing more than consensual activity that then had deteriorated from there. But prosecutors said that the Combs is a, a danger, clear evidence of dangerousness, a long pattern of abuse, they were saying today. But the defense offered the sun and the moon, saying, we will do anything if you allow them to, to post bail. $50 million bail. They would have off-duty police outside his home, control who comes and goes, take away his cell phone, anything that the judge was willing to do. And the word just coming in now, the judge saying, no way, he will remain in jail. He's certainly will. And again, uh, sharing reporting from our Aaron Katursky that is in that courtroom. He said that Combs did not appear to react, but that he had his eyes cast downward while he was seated at the defense table when this all came down. And, and so, uh, Brian Buckmeyer, to you. Uh, the judge said the defense proposal to this bail pa package was insufficient um, and that the government, on the other side of that, provided sufficient evidence that Combs is a danger to the community and a danger to obstruct justice and intimidate witnesses. And, Brian, I find some of that language particularly interesting when you think about what his defense attorneys were trying to argue and they were essentially trying to paint a picture of what it would look like if he was to be allowed out on bail with security teams monitoring his going comings and goings who would come into the residence and brian uh his own defense lawyer used the language what i'm trying to fashion is a situation where any witness intimidation would be virtually impossible yeah, and that was the issue that we saw with the initial judge mm -hmm. yesterday, that in evaluating this case for the possibility of bond and or bail, uh, that there's always the issue of flight, whether or not someone's going to flee the state, flee the country, whatever it may be, and not come back to court, but also whether or not that Sean Combs' power and influence could be a force of threatening, uh, witness intimidation, or reoccurring or reoffending in a way that would harm other uh, women in his, in his inner circle, so to speak. And so the defense is trying to fashion 
fashion, a way of saying he has no opportunity to intimidate witnesses, even though there's alleged evidence that he's reaching out to some of those women to try to ensure that they're not coming forward after that Cassie lawsuit came forward. But it seems like, as, the, as you quoted the judge, that was insufficient. That whatever the bail package the defense tried to put forward was not enough for this judge, Judge Carter, to say that there, he would be a safety to the community and will return back to court on each and every day. I mean, right, again, the head, there was a head of a private security firm even appearing in court. There would be a pre-approved list of visitors, and Combs would have no access to a cell phone or the Internet under this uh, defense proposal that, again, was denied by the judge today. So he will remain in a federal facility until court. And, and Alex, as we read some of these notes, again, from Aaron Katursky, it was really interesting when the defense, you know, tried to talk about the trust that they were trying to build with the court in terms of getting uh, Diddy into New York ahead of this and ahead of his arrest, knowing that this was coming. And at one point, the defense called Diddy an actual altar boy. Uh, Alex, the judge pushed back on that pretty quickly. The judge did push back on that, saying no, that, that, that you can't say that. And they said today he is eminently trustworthy, is the, the quote that was used in an argument to the court saying he came to New York, he is not going to flee, we're going to put all of this, all of these uh, different aspects into play, and he will put up $50 million, his Miami home, his family members would sign off, he wouldn't be able to travel, women would not be able to, to come into his home, and then they went beyond that. When the judge seemed like he was skeptical today, they said, well, all right, what about these other things of putting police outside his home, keeping a log of visitors coming in and out? But the judge today is saying the government, reading Aaron's notes here, the government had provided sufficient evidence that Combs is a danger to the community and a danger to obstruct justice and intimidate witnesses. A lot of this coming back to, to prosecutors saying he had tried to reach out to a an alleged victim, saying essentially that if she continued to defend him and stayed on his side, financially she would be okay they said that was a problem and uh, and made their argument today and, and the judge coming down uh, on the, the side of uh, prosecutors certainly did and, and brian it sounds like he's going to be held in a special housing unit uh there in brooklyn are you able to read us in on what that's like at all yeah so he's going to be in the metropolitan detention center we call it mdc it's where Sam Bankman Friedman, uh, where R. Kelly was pending prosecution. Uh, it is called a special housing unit, but people who are there call it the SHU, S H U. It's a part of segregated population where people are not in what you often hear as gen pop or general population. Some of the difficulties of that, I, I've had clients in the SHU, is sometimes they, they literally go missing for some 30, 45 days. It's sometimes a place where people go when they have infractions while they're incarcerated. And what I mean by disappear is they don't have access or full access to phones, the internet, calls. Sometimes when my clients go into the shoe, the first time I hear about it is when their family members say, Mr. Brian, I can't find my son. I can't find my loved one. Where are they? And it's only through investigation that we find there's an infraction of something in the sense that they're in the shoe. So to the defense attorney's point, Mark, uh, he's saying it's going to be much harder for him to try to mount a defense based on the limitations of where he'll be in that shoe. Again, S-H-U, not like S-H-O-E, um, based on just the ins and outs of how segregated population works in MDC. Wow, how times can change here. In nearly a year, this investigation has been going on, and it wasn't that long ago that Sean Diddy Combs was offered a key to the city there in New York, where he is now being held in a federal facility awaiting trial. Alex and Brian, our thanks to both of them. Prison is easy to get into. Was hard, but, oh my God, it's hard as hell to get out of. But y'all stay tuned. Nine times out of ten, we're going to go live. Or well, we're going to try to go live again tonight. Y'all already seen what they did to me last night. Y'all hit that like button. Hit that share button. Hit that subscribe button. And pay attention to your circle before they hurt you. I'm out.